everyone welcome back to rts and welcome back to summer space shape up this is week 11 huh, week 11 if you can believe that hard to believe we have one more week to go in this round it's just amazing how fast time goes but i think the older you go or the older you get the faster it goes <laughs> yeah everything goes <laughs> when you get older absolutely okay so in week 11 what we're going to talk about are dies and die cuts and let me tell you something have die cuts come a long way over the years? <laughs> it's amazing, amazing. And of course, dies, uh, dies themselves have came a long way too. So we're gonna talk about that. Have a little bit of fun, get together and see how we're gonna organize. And then how are you maintaining things in the previous weeks? And if this is just the week you popped in and you're working with the dies, that's okay. You can go back and work on the previous weeks or skip around. There's always conversation on this channel about organizing everything. So it doesn't matter if you're in week two, watch that video. I'll have the round one listed below and leave comments on that video. People always read the comments on this channel. I just love my subscribers because they're very active in the comment section. So we're going to talk about dies and die cuts and some tips and tricks. And so then in last week, we talked about how sometimes you have to re think things and work backwards, which we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then also too, one thing I want to talk about is photos, because I will say that is something in scrapbooking, not card making, not paper crafting, but us scrapbookers, we have to think about photos every single week. So maybe for what you need to do is maybe back up your summer photos. Just simply do that. Or maybe what you could do is ask family for some summer photos before they start deleting. You know how that goes. And then also to someone recently asked me about tracking photos. And I was going to address that in our photo series. And I don't know when that will be in the future. It may be a few months from now, but I wanted to give a quick way of how I have tracked photos or layouts in the in the past and it's simply I've done a few different systems but I would say the quickest way to track the photos you've printed or the layouts you've done or anything just a simple notebook and then you could tab it do you want it by year do you want it by season do you want it by holiday do you want it by person in your family that is just a quick answer of how to track photos or layouts or both in some time in some years i have tracked my photo printing some years i have tracked my layouts and so coming up in our photo series in 2020 which uh this year is layouts next year it's going to be focused on my photos because i'm going to uh, i'm going to really buckle down and get some things accomplished in my photo or organizing, especially when it comes to heritage photos. So I'll be sharing that process. But honestly, I will show you how I'm going to be tracking mine. And it is simply basically by a notebook. But I have found that notebooks, sometimes I run into issues with that. So I'm going to be using something like the Happy Planner system for tracking my photos only because of the disk bound, not because it's going to be a Happy Planner. I just wanted to give you a reference that I use. I like the Happy Planner system because then I can add to and take away. So I will talk more about that, but simply for tracking, get yourself a notebook that you already have, get a pretty one at Walmart, and then just track that way. And again, tab them. I suggest tabbing however you want to track. For everybody, it'll be something different. So that was a quick answer for that. But again, we'll have more talk about that later. I'm just trying to keep my head above water at this point. <laughs> yes, with moving things. And so I, that comes with saying that all summer long, I have seemed to move something in my space every single week. If it went from the left, it went to the right, it went to the front, it went to the back, because I'm moving furniture around, changing things around. And ladies, you know how it is. You move one thing, 10 more things follow. It's just amazing. And then for me, when I move things, then I have to feel like I got to deep clean everything. It's I, I'm not going to say that's a bad habit, but it take, it's a long process because if I move something, I will deep clean it like nobody's business and then I'll get back to what I needed to do. It's just something, I got that from my mom, <laughs> but things are clean. It's just, it takes me a while to get it done. And so I wanted to say that with all of this moving and shifting things around all summer, and then also too for filming, I have to shift things around all the time for filming, is that this desk was always in such a state that I could scrapbook all summer. And I can't stress that enough. It doesn't matter if you have 10 hot fires behind you. It doesn't matter if you have 12 piles behind you. It doesn't matter. As long as you keep this clean and you can keep scrapbooking, it 
for me, what I do is I organize, and but I keep on scrapbooking because there was a period of time where I was organizing. I think it was like five or six months, and then I didn't get to scrapbook as much, and then I didn't want to come back here and do anything because I didn't get to do the fun stuff, if that makes sense. So sometimes it's that balance between organizing and scrapbooking, playing, that type of thing. So let's get into talking about, um, Let's should we talk about dyes first? Why not? Let's talk about dyes. Okay, so the easiest thing to do about dyes is that you simply will gather your dies, okay? In whatever fashion that would be, okay? If you just have them in packages, then get all of your dies together, put them in a basket or bin and keep them contained and organized in one place. And it doesn't have to be in anything but the packaging, okay? Because you dies are expensive. What's this, $12.99? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, this was originally nineteen ninety nine. dollars course Tuesday morning 499 you can't beat that but dyes are expensive so you might as well protect them have one holding place for them and then whether you use it or you're bringing things in uh, just keep them in that one area even if it's just a bin it doesn't matter what it looks like just have one place and then the, the second thing is to there's a piece of fuzz <laughs> floating around then the second step is is then to think about how you want to organize them okay and I'm going to just show you different things because I pulled out a lot of different samples. Why not? We're going to talk about dyes. Is that uh, you have to come up with a system. What do you want? Let me move this for a minute. What do you want for your dyes? How do you want... Well, first of all, how do you want to access them? Where do they need to be? And then you think about the container. And we talked that about... We talked more about that last week. When it comes to organizing things, especially when this is a category that you have a lot of and you have to invest some money in it, you almost have to start backwards before you start buying Averill pockets and you start buying those fridge bins and containers and things like that. You need to start, you need to think, okay, where are they physically going to rest in my space long term? Okay. And then you have to think, okay, is that going to, is that going to fit my space, the container? And then the container, within the container, what are you going to use? Are you going to use magnetic sheets? Are you going to buy magnetic sheets already done? Are you going to cut your own? And then what pocket are you putting them in? How are you going to label them? So it's one of those things. You got to start in the back end of things. What container are you going to put them in and then work your way back? Just the thought process, not the doing. And then once you start from the back end and you work to, okay, this is how I'm going to do it, then you start buying things as you go because there's no way you can afford everything all at once. When it came to my dyes, it was about a year process till I got it done. By the time, it seemed like every time I was in the groove, I would run out of pockets or then I would run out of steam and I didn't feel like uh, labeling them. And then I didn't feel like die cutting them because I didn't inventory of mine so I would say level two organizing is finding that bin and that container but again if this is new to you or you have not found a system that works for you just put the brakes on and stop and say what is my end game where do I really want them if you have to close your eyes and visualize in your space where do you want them how can you access them quickly how can you store them easily and how can you use them creatively. Yes, that's a little quote for me. Absolutely. But when you think about it, how can you access them in a quick manner? Okay. And so then of course, storing, you don't want it to be difficult. You don't want to have to open up three bins in two baskets to get your one die. Just so think about that. So then level three then would be absolutely thinking about a catalog or an inventory because that's the using part. Okay. You got the accessing, you got the storing, and then how you're going to use them. And then using to me, I think is where the catalog system comes in. And I'll just briefly show you a few samples of how I've done things. Okay. So let's talk about containers for a minute. So let's talk about just normal. What I think a lot of people do is that and if you have to watch other videos to see how other people do things before you decide, I say that's exactly what you should do because not one size fits all. Some people like to leave them in the original packaging so they know who they are by and how many came with them. They like the samples that come with it. So you could do that. A lot of us use Avriel Pockets or I'll have a link below for the uh, knockoff version of... I'm not going to say the knockoff version. It's just a clear pocket, but it's not Avery L brand. And they've gotten some good reviews. So I'll have that listed below. So then all I did is I use a magnetic sheet and I cut it down and I adhered this magnetic sheet on to a piece of cardstock. And then I will have the link below where I get my cardstock. It's Nina cardstock. I get it in bulk at Sam's Club. Awesome deal. Yes. And then I would just simply put as many dies as I could 
on my sheet. And then of course it goes in an Avery L pocket. Now I use Avery L only because that's what I started with and they have held up and I kind of like things uniform. So I, I'm familiar with Avery L and I will honestly say that I don't think the quality of Avery L went, um, I don't think the quality of Avery L changed as I have been buying them. I haven't bought anything for a while in the last couple years as far as pockets. So I hope it hasn't changed, but they're just a nice quality. And then also too with a name brand, if you run into a problem, you can contact them and say, you know, I bought a pack of 25 and there's something wrong. Most companies will accommodate those problems. And so then I just numbered them. And that's how I did those type of dies. Now I also have dies that are... Let's talk about this. I got a couple of different samples. What do you do with these type of uh, dies? And I only have three of these. Only three. I never got into these big dies. Okay. I only have three of these. And so then I just have them numbered. And I have these sitting in a, a two-tiered wooden cabinet. It's, it's just a small cabinet that my brother made for me. And so this houses all my dies and my embossing folders. It's just like a little die cutting and embossing folder center. I open it up and it has two... Um, two shelves. Someday I'll show it. And I just have these big ones labeled with a number because I, I only have three. But you can certainly find a container for them, a crate or something like that. And then how else do I have some? So then I have these little thinlets. Okay. These are my quick cuts back in the day. And so I just have them a little paper tab separating them by upper and lower alpha. And of course, how do I have this labeled? I have a number here on the side. Let me see if I can tilt this. It says B3, and I'll show you in my inventory binder what that is about. So that is how another way I have them. These are just by numbered. If I can show that, that's just by number. And then I have some of these Sizzix. Remember this? This is old school. I didn't ever buy a lot of these. And so again, I just use these little bins from the Dollar Tree. I think at one time they were 50 cents. I don't know what they are now, probably a dollar, but they were 50 cents, two for 50 cents or three for a dollar or something like that, or 50 cents a piece. And so then I just have them, I just have two sets in there. So that's very compact. And then of course you see again, what do I have on the side? It says B2. So that stands for bin two, uh, bin, bin three, and then bin one. I just have a, some more of these quick cuts, but of course these are in a different size, so they wouldn't fit in this way. So I just put them in the bin this way. So you can see just with this alone, yeah, wait, I got one more to show you. Okay. Just the end, and I don't, I don't feel I have a lot of dies. I feel like I have a moderate amount. I don't have a ton, but I don't have a little. I think of a moderate amount. And so let's talk about one more too. Okay. And then what do you do with these type of dies? These are long, long, Okay, long, long, and then all of these, long. So, and I just have a moderate amount of dies. Look how many different sizes there. They won't fit in a bin. These fit nice in a bin. These aren't going to fit anything. These you can get a lot in a little bin. And these are too small to fit in a bin. These are too long to fit in a bin. So you can see, <laughs> you need a little bit of variety when it comes to your dies. It's not a one size fits all. Now, of course, I've been scrapbooking a long time. Some of these sizes aren't as popular as they were back in the day. So you may only have something like this that would they would all fit in an Avery L. That would be neat and concise. But... There's no way you're going to take an alpha of this nature and you're going to put that in Avery L pockets because then, you know, that gets to be expensive. So a 50 cent bin or a dollar bin from the Dollar Tree works just as fine. Okay, so then with these, I just have them stored right along with the plates that go with that. So again, that's a Tiffany Spalding trick. Use um, Store things together, you use together. So these long ones go right on top of this platform. So I have that, those both of those the die and the platform all together. So that is something to consider. So with that, now you'll see on these long dies, I don't have a number at all. I don't need a number because they're just in a pile with my long dies. Okay, and I'll show you in my catalog binder. Okay, so let's get to that. So that is level two, finding the container, and I say good luck with that. And you can see in my case, you may have to get more than one type of container. I have Avery L pockets, I have Dollar Tree. What else do I have? I just have some in like a long Ziploc bag. Uh, those bags that your thickers fit, sometimes those are nice. And then some, like these, and again, I only have three of these. I don't even have them in a container. They're just numbered. Okay, so if I was to pull out, and I have a couple to put away. If I pull out my catalog binder, 
And if I go to my dies, which is in the back, and let's say I go to number six. Okay, let's go to number six. That's my first one here. So number six, everything that's in this pocket is represented here, okay? And so I just took an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and I scored it in the middle. Right here's my score line. And then I just tried to put as much as I could in one Avriel pocket. Now, when I first started this, I just want to say that when you when you're first starting of organizing your dies, you can simply put all your hearts in one, all your stars in one, all your feathers in one, and then all your doilies and all your cameras, and then you'll eventually see. <laughs> Sometimes it comes down to what's going to fit. You have to combine, and then also as you start buying, you just find places for them. And so I would say, and uh, Tiffany Spalding says this a lot, is that you need to have a numbering system that's going to work for you as you keep scrapbooking, as you keep buying. So as I buy a die, which I have this one here, I will come to the end here, and what am I at? I am at 68, okay? So I would take a, some white cardstock, some scraps, die cut them, and then I would put them right here, and then I would put them in an Avery L pocket, such as this, and I would label it 68, okay? Now these magnetic sheets, I did want to say, all, all those are, are those um, register covers, uh, magnetic register, or what do they call them, register, or something else. I was going to say valve, but that's not the word. Uh, they're just registered vent covers. That's what I'm trying to say. They're magnetic vent covers. I get them at Lowe's. Uh, three, there's three in a pack, and so I can get nine out of one pack of those. And so works really well. Okay. So, again, that's one of those supplies. When you buy the Avery L pockets, when you're buying the magnetic sheets, when you're buying things like that, you can't do it all at one time because, first of all, you don't know how many you're going to need. And you always seem to need more than you think you're going to need. And then also, it's cost. You can't do it all at one time. I mean, unless you have $100 or $200 just to soak into your dye inventory or your dye organizing, then you can do it all at one time. What I did was I, I would do some for a month, and the next month I'd try to do some more, you know, whenever I would get the lows and buy vent covers or make an order and place a Vireal pocket order, that type of thing. So, uh, again, as Tiffany was saying, you have to make, make this numbering system work for you. So just keep following along with a number don't try to group everything together because it gets very hairy and it doesn't work long term just when you buy something give it the next number that's up uh you know up in the next order and just be done with it because it's easy especially when you're doing a catalog it doesn't matter if you have a heart here and a heart here and then a heart back here i don't have that many i can leaf through them in a quick manner so say for example there are stars there are stars and i think there were stars someplace else stars and there were stars someplace else. So there's just no way you can keep them all together unless you are done buying dyes permanently. But who can say that? Nobody. We can't. We keep buying. That's just the way it goes. So that is what I want to say for level three is that you would absolutely do a catalog or an inventory or Evernote or some type of system because you can do all the organizing of these dyes you want. But when you sit down to craft and you sit down to scrapbook, how are you going to know in a quick manner what you have? You can't go to the cabinet and leaf through all of them. I mean, that would be 20 minutes right there. So this is a quicker way. You just have everything in one binder or a catalog, or you just have a catalog or a binder system just for your dies. In this case, I have dies embossing folders my slice machine and punches i have it all in one and i will tell you i told myself when i did this catalog binder and i'll have a video listed below that talks more about this is that once this started to get full then this was an indicator then you need to stop shopping and so you can tell i'm starting to get a little heft here so yeah it's time to uh, stop buying as much and of course i've been doing that over the last few years or you know, there's always purging. So when you get to this inventory system, I say before you start organizing, before you start doing event covers or Avriel pockets or whatever system you're using, go through and start purging at that time. There's no sense investing time in organizing and cataloging something if you don't love it. Well, that was the wrong thing right there. If you don't love it, get rid of it now. But with that, dyes are expensive. If you're not sure, keep it for now. You can always purge later because dyes are not cheap. Because let me give you an example about dyes not being cheap. This Quick Cuts font is called Studio. 
It is my favorite alpha bar none. And that cost me $199. This right here. That cost me $199. Now, of course, that was back in the day before all these type of dyes started coming out. Okay. But $199. Yeah. And that was even with a little bit of a discount. Ooh, there's no way in today's standard that I would pay $199 for a set of alphas. But, you know, I, I was, I really, really wanted it. And I'm really, really glad I have it. And I really, really have used it. So I'm not going to begrudge myself. But every time I see this, I think of $199. I don't think, oh, gee, I love that alpha. Because I'll never get rid of it. Uh, I do love it. It is my favorite. But I don't think it was worth $199. No, I don't. But it was a gift. So you know how that is. Okay. So uh, I think I want to stop there for a minute. Because, oh, one more thing. Let's talk about dyes. One more thing. What do you do when you have dyes and stamp combos? Ooh, let's talk about that. I don't know if I talked about that when I talked about stamps. I had a couple here. Let me see if I can find them. Is that what when you have combos? Okay, so this is what I mean. So if I look at this stamps, these are by Technique Tuesday, and it has a D1 on here. So that is telling me that I have dies, and they're number one. So let's go see if that matches up. And right there. So there are the dies that matches a stamp set. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is that you can absolutely put your dies in with your stamps. So some people would say, well, why do you have one one way and one another way? And here's how I gauge whether I'm going to put my die in with my stamp or I'm going to keep my die separately. This is what I do. If I can use this die on its own and not have to use this stamp, the die goes all by itself. Now, in this case, with this We Are Memory Keeper set, when I went to die cut these dies, you couldn't make heads or tail what they said. So it was basically a useless die unless I used a stamp. So that's why I put them together because the only way I will use this die is with this stamp. So I wanted to point that out. So then you can always come in here with an indicator that you have stamps. Just put a little note in there. You got stamps to go with it. I don't because I play with dies more than I do stamps truth be known. Okay. But that's one way you can put a note in your stamps or put a note in your dies or put a note in both. Absolutely. Okay. So that's talking about dies. And then again, as we talked about in week 10, this is another one of those products, another one of these categories. You have to start at the tail end of things visualize in your space where do you want them and then you think what container is going to work and then you think what's going to work inside that container to uh, house these in a better protective manner and then you have to think well now how am i going to access them so i can use them so you have to work backwards and then once you make all those decisions then you start buying what you need and then you start working on them yes okay so now i'm going to take a break there for a minute and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about die cuts and ephemera okay hold on all right, so now let's talk about die cuts or ephemera or just these lovely little beauties. What are some ways to organize these? And so as I was saying with the dies, there's no one size fits all. So this really comes down to your style and also to your personality. How do you like to access your supplies? What works for you? So uh, the first thing for level one would be simply just gather your die cuts, put them in a bin. As we've said about every level one, <laughs> that's all you do is the gather. Gather and put them in one place so you know where they are when you want to use them. Very simple. Level two then is start to think about how you want to organize them. And then three, I say, is think about how you're going to access them. So let's talk about some different ways. And I will have some videos listed below when it comes about uh, the catalog binder, organizing dies, organizing uh, um, die cuts and things like that. And then also to week 11 from round one will be listed because I may talk about things uh, last year that I didn't talk about this year and vice versa. So one quick way to uh, organize die cuts and ephemera, because this is a product that I think a lot of us love and we're going to continue to buy, especially if you get them for $1.99 or $2.49 a Tuesday morning, or this is great stocking stuffers. Absolutely. So one of the quick ways is to buy either a four by six or five by seven box, whether it's by Iris brand or the paper studio brand, and you simply would open this up okay and these are by paper studio and i will tell you when you buy these in the store any type of plastic container definitely check your latch because if the latch doesn't work in the store it's going to work even less after months or even a couple years worth of use so this one does not have a strong latch and i had ordered i think six of these from hobby lobby at one time and when you're ordering online that's the downfall so you simply would just open them up and what works, what fits, I mean, look at that. That's the easiest thing to do, okay? 
So you can eat, that's just, I mean, that's like the one, two, three of die cut organizing right there. <laughs> yes. And then how you can label them. Let me get this little one there. How you can label them is that you could use the packaging and then you would cut it down and you would put it right on top. So say that was cut down. Okay. And then I would see that this is the carousel. Okay. By Maggie Holmes. And so you could trim off the top. You could trim off the bottom, whatever you want to see. And then some people have absolutely labeled, um, when they cut down this packaging, they've either adhered it to the top lid on the inside, adhered it to the top lid on the outside, or they have taken a, um, label maker and they've labeled on the outside uh maggie holmes carousel so again it depends on what you want i'm a visual person and even though i don't even need to have to say this is maggie holmes carousel some of us just remember our collections like that but some people want to see the name so it's up to you do you want to see the name or do you want to see the image of what the product is and then you could just put these in a photo box they line up quite nicely or just put them on a shelf put them in a basket put it in a bin one, two, three, you're done. That is awesome. Or the uh, inexpensive way is that you, instead of using the packaging that they came in, just use a plastic baggie, cut this down. And I did that for several years. And then I would just keep all these. Instead of using these, I used plastic bags, you know, Ziploc bags. I would cut this down and then I would just put all those bags in a basket or a bin. Or the other thing I would do is I would put them in a photo box. I did that for several years. Um, before I started doing them in notebooks and binders, which we'll talk about. Okay, and I just put that right in there. I know what they are. Okay, and I just have this in my embellishment bucket bin because I'm still playing with this carousel line. Okay, so you could do that with anything. Now, sometimes when it comes to this, you could maybe put more than one Maggie Holmes die cut pack in one of these, or maybe you have a couple Christmas themes. Uh, it doesn't matter the manufacturer, put them by collection, put them by theme. You can do that. There's no wrong way to do that. It's just however you want to do that. Okay, but now if you're someone that you need to know what they are, uh, don't forget to make a note somewhere. Okay, some people, um, when they do sharing online, they need to know the company. So I don't need to do that. Uh, so make a reference is what I'm saying. Somewhere in that ca container. Okay, and these are inexpensive. Wait till they go on sale at Michael's or Hobby Lobby half off. You can get them for like $1.25. Crazy, crazy. Okay, so the other thing you can do with die cuts is that you could simply, what I call my vending machine. <laughs> yes. I started to do this. I started something like this because I wanted to see my die cuts in a quick manner. Leafing through bags, uh, whether it's in a packaging or a Ziploc bag, and, pat and rummaging through these things, that gets on my nerves really quick. I get too impatient. I want to see in a quick manner what do I have and where am I going. And so let me show you the first one I did. This will be the second level that I did. Okay, so the first one I did was that I would take those die cuts oh this is meaty <laughs> i would take it out of those packages and then i simply would take i'll show you i would take these mounting tabs you get them at craft stores they're just a little white adhesive tab because that was i have quite a few of them left over from consulting days that's what it looks like let me show you something with a color that's what it looks like just a little tab adhesive tab okay and they're very affordable and then you can tear them to whatever size because sometimes die cuts are bigger than the other. Sometimes you need a little tab, you know, a little square adhesive. And so then I would simply open up the packaging, throw it away, and I would plop them down by collection on a piece of cardstock. This is not copy paper, this is cardstock. And I just hole punch it and put it in a binder I've had. And I just went package by package. And then as I went through this, Right here are some baby collections, and I think I kept some that was home. I kept them together. Uh, there's some summer I kept together, summer, and uh, it's a, in a very loose uh, grouping in here. It's not by, it, I'm going to say it's in no group whatsoever, but if I had a couple summer lines, I'd put them together. If I had a couple uh, home lines, I would put it together. Um, there are some, see, fancy pants, fancy pants. Crate paper. That was old crate paper. So there's some ones that look like vintage. They're in the back. There's some camping. There's road trip. Sewing. Cooking. <laughs> cooking. Uh, Jen Hatfield. And then there's some jelly bean. And there's some. So these are like fall and these are like winter. So when you do something like that, after you put them together, 
you can put them in a little bit of a group if you want in your binder but that's a very quick way and I will tell you I love putting on a video opening a die cut pack and using these little mounting tabs adhesive squares and then just putting them in this binder because what happens is, is that you're physically touching every one of those die cuts before you even use it so then you kind of become a little bit of aware of what you have it's very addictive I love this and so I showed this recently that I was doing a Disney page and I was flipping through to see what I wanted and I spied a zebra now there's no way that I would know to look at a Amy Tangerine certain collection pack for the zebra so it was just easier to go through this. So this is just purely by collection. Okay, there's a Valentine's, there's home, there's some baby, there's a little bit of everything. Okay, and then if you have some that are too big, and I ran out of room, I, I left this uh, these Penelope's in this bag. They're three girls. I have a special thing I'm going to do for them. So I just left them in the packaging. And then another thing is what I do is I pre-cut, no, I pre-punch some of these cardstock, and so then when I'm, you know, if I buy one, then my sheets are all ready to go. I just plop them on there. I mean, talk about a quick process, and I really enjoy this process. So that's one way. That is a binder full of die cuts or ephemera by collection, okay? So there, it's all types of collection. So then the other thing I've done is I wanted to show you this composition book. This is the same setup. This is exactly the same thing. Instead of it being a binder, it's in a composition book. But these are all Kaiser Craft. Every single one is Kaiser Craft because back in the heyday, I bought these and I bought every one that came out because this was my obsession for a while, for several years. I still love these. I don't think you get as many as you used to, and the price has went up a little bit, so I this is a now a product I consider too expensive for me to buy. If I can get them on sale, or if I get them for gifts or something, but I no longer, I don't really, oh, there's some Jelly Bean, <laughs> or I'm sorry, there's some Illustrated Faith. Oh yeah, let's just go to that. Okay, so uh, as uh, time has went on, this product became too expensive for me. I cannot justify $7.99 for a pack of embellishments even though it's by Kaiser Craft. I just can't. Plus, look how many I have. That's just one grouping of my Kaiser Craft. I don't I have no business of buying any more. So then I had some empty space and so there's more Kaiser Craft. That's a beautiful collection. And so then I um Anne had gave me a gift card and I had gotten some illustrated face. So um the reason why I kept Kaiser Craft all together, uh, simply because of how many I have, and then I have put so much money into these, I love using these for my Bible journaling. And so I love Kaiser Craft for my Bible journaling. So I went ahead and added some more of my Illustrated Faith along with it, because if I would travel or I sit down and work on Bible journaling, I just pull this one composition book. And so again, there's more Illustrated Faith. Illustrated Faith, Illustrated Faith, and then of course these are all ones that are by um, oh, Cheeky Studio, yes, and so I have all of them in there because I would use them for Bible journaling as well. Okay, so that is by collection or by manufacturer, okay? So there's three manufacturers in that one, and so then the other way that I want to show is that I have die cuts by color. So when I say in my space I do a little bit of everything, I truly hope you can see. I don't have all my dies organized one way, not in the same container, and the same way with my die cuts. I have them by manufacturer, I have them by collection, and now here, these are just by color. And you see, I only have, how many do I have? Well, there's some. So these are just die cuts. And I'll have a video linked below talking about this. And again, this is the same thing that I just showed in the previous binder, that these are just simply by color. I have a color in every rainbow, of these type of binders and so this is my black one and this is just die cuts with with the color black and so you can see there where I have pulled some off that's a good thing that means you're using your supplies so if you want it to look neat and pristine and perfect then don't do it this way because you're gonna get look at all these things look at all those who are ripped apart look at that that's fun that means I've used for it looks like I've used a whole collection of something isn't that fun? Okay, so that is what I wanted to show for die cuts. I don't think there's much more to talk about die cuts. It just comes down to, first of all, how much do you have? Where do you want it? And then how do you want to access it? And then how are you going to use it? And the reason, um, so I did get this question a few months ago. If I have this by color, they could understand why I would have a by, uh, by collection because sometimes you want to keep a collection together because you want to use it together. But then why would I have these composition books? And that came about 
so that when I travel, I could just grab one of these, okay? I have a couple of these, <laughs> yeah. So this came down to uh, having it by color. Some was by collection. This was because I needed uh, the simplicity of just grabbing one book uh, when I wanted to scrapbook on the road. So that's why this came about. So um, because these binders are very bulky, I can't take them. And sometimes what I did before I did those two composition books is that I would just open this up and then I would just take some of these sheets and put them in a kit. I used to do that too. So I think that is all I'm going to have for week 11 when it comes to the summer space shape up. Talking about dies and die cuts. And I will tell you, this is a long process. There's no way you can do all your dies and all your die cuts in one week or even a month. It takes time. It took me a year to do my dies from beginning to end till I got them all in the Avery Alpagas, till I got them all in those vent magnetic sheets, till I got them all numbered, till I got them all in my catalog system. It took me a year from beginning to end, close to a year. And then with my die cuts, it was one of those things I worked on it here and there. And then this was something I would do in front of a movie, in front of a video, uh, while I was traveling, I'd work on this project. So it's another one of those organizing uh, projects that it takes time to do. You can't do it overnight. Unless you have a small amount. <laughs> Yeah, then you're, there you go. But for some of us, we have a lot of this. We have a lot of dies and we have a lot of die cuts. But it's all fun. And someone had asked me recently, she said she didn't have a lot. But she knew that she was going to be getting a lot. She was going to keep buying that. So she asked me, should I do it by color? Should I do it by collection? Or should I do it by manufacturer? And I said, it comes down to what you truly like, what you truly want. If you know when you sit to scrapbook or paper craft and you want to just pull out graphic 45, then think about having some of your graphic 45s together. Or if you sit down to scrapbook or craft or make cards and you want to go by color, then you should have some by color. In my case, you see, I have some by manufacturer, <laughs> I have some by color, and I have some by collection. So it doesn't hurt to do all three. And if you don't know, then what I would suggest, don't settle into one way of doing something until you know you're going to like it. Because some people have said that they have done this with their stickers and they didn't like it. It's not for everybody. It truly isn't. You may simply want to think about something like this. And that way you can just flip it to a different container if you don't like it. So think about that. Okay, so that's all I have for week 11 in the Summer Space Shape Up. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave, uh, leave those comments below. And I do want to add this because I'm going to have to add this for the next several videos. If any time you see in below in my videos in the comment section, if it says comments are disabled on this video, please know that that is on YouTube's end. That has nothing to do with me, and I can't change that. There's going to be some changes coming up on YouTube, unfortunately, but that will be another conversation for another day. So I do want to say that if you see videos that starts popping up with that tag, comments are disabled from this video. That's not on my end, and I have no control over that. But again, we'll talk about that probably in a mixer coming up. Yes. So uh, come back in a few days. We're going to have week 12 or summer space shape up, and we're going to wrap up this round two, and then we can spend the fall. We're going to spend some time scrapbooking, and we're going to do a couple series. Yes. Okay. So that's all I have for today. Come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.